A little while ago, this dining table found its way into my possession, replacing the free dining table that I had found from a lovely elderly couple on Gumtree a few years ago. This new old dining table is about 20 or possibly 30 years old as it came from my partner's childhood home. I want to give it a facelift and also make it over in my favorite color. Well, not pastel pink, but green. My plan is to reupholster this burnt orange velvet with a hand printed kind of William Morris inspired design. For this project I'm going to be using a natural colored linen and green acrylic paint because my plan with this dining room is to have a lot of different shades of green on the walls as I'm doing a kind of morning glory and latticework themed wallpaper that I am very slowly painting onto the walls. Before I can start stripping off this old fabric and putting on the new fabric I actually need to make the fabric. As I said I wanted something William and Morris inspired because I am an arts and crafts girly and I also wanted it to have a kind of antique lived in look despite the fact that I actually bought the fabric from Spotlight and it's totally new. Enter lino printing. Now I've done lino printing once or twice. I think I did it in high school and I was really bad at it. I remember a lot of people being able to make some really insanely cool designs in my art class, but I was a very forgettable artist. I'm still a pretty forgettable artist, but luckily I vaguely remembered the process and I think I'm better than I was when I was 16. I'd actually purchased some printmaking supplies about a year ago because I was initially planning to hand print wallpaper, similarly to how uh, Anna Bewley does it on how to renovate a chateau, but instead I've gone for stenciling my wallpapers and hand painting them directly on the walls. So I figured that this would be the perfect project to use my lino printing supplies on. I found this acanthus leaf print on a preserved piece of wallpaper from the VNA website. So I downloaded the image and I pulled it into Photoshop to work out how the repeat worked and also have a look at the different sizes I might want to make my stamp in. I picked the smaller size out of the three that I had printed off and I started transferring this onto my polymer sheet. Because this was a polymer sheet, it was quite difficult to actually transfer the pattern on. I'm not 100% sure how to do that. I looked at a few tips, but none of them really seemed to work, including carbon paper. I'm not sure if that's because I was using polymer sheet instead of actual lino sheets, but that is something that hopefully I will figure out as I get a little bit more attuned to this medium. Because of this, I had to painstakingly cut out each individual leaf with a razor blade and puzzle that together on the sheet. My hair is also absolutely subsisting on sheer willpower at this moment. I haven't washed it in like three days, but I did brush it today. She did. After deciding on the two stamp sizes that I wanted to experiment with, I have gone and cut out one. It is definitely an experiment. I don't think that I've done it very well, but I'm going to test it out, see how it goes, see if I like the look of it. I'm going to experiment on some, some of this cream colored linen. I specifically wanted it to be cream colored. I do not need this much that I can mix up a lot of with the fabric medium. I want to test for washability, durability, etc. This is all of the materials that I'm currently using. So I want to go for a kind of like dark sagey green. I like this middle color, but I was wondering if it shouldn't be brighter like 
this over here. This here is definitely the color that I like. It looks really good on this chest paper. That is not really, that might be better, but I think it needs more bright green. Situation, it's a lot more muted. So for this, I'm gonna add a little textile medium. This is the textile medium that I'm using. You want two parts of color with one part textile medium. I will measure this out when I paint more, but for now I'm just gonna do it like this. Just kind of lightly coat the roller, start coating my stamp. And this is the first test and try not to smudge it. Oh, I think my paint's not wet enough. Interesting, but the, the, the leaves look cool. Okay, I'm gonna just try using this to spread it out so I get a more even layer. Drop my stamp in here and then we try. Oh, cool. Wait, that's looking kind of sick. I like how this looks like leaf veins. All right, I like the stamp. I've got to change some things about the stamp and I need to figure out how to properly roll my paint on, but I think that this is gonna look cool. I'm gonna wash the stamp out. This is what it looks like right now. And then I'll cut the edges off a little bit to help with some of the paint getting on there and spreading. The William and Morris example that I used is obviously layers and layers of liner print and I just want something green and white. So this I'm really happy with. I think it gives the impression of leaves. It looks really pretty and like hand done. I love the veininess that's showing up. Um, and I think that'll look really sick. I also think it would look good in reverse where there's more white than green. So this has shown me a lot, which is I've got to cut my stamp out to sort of the shape to prevent these like edge, edgy corner lines that are showing up. Um, and then I've also got to roll my paint across it to ensure that I get a good um, sort of roughly even uh, distribution of the paint. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm going to wash it and see what happens. Fabric paint did have a very minor color bleed, but nothing unusual to the first wash of an item of clothing. So I was pretty happy with that. And I decided to move on to the... It took me a little while to work out how the print actually repeated in person and how closely I had to stamp things together, as well as how much paint I had to put on now for the linen, which was a little bit more rough than the cotton. And if you do a project like this, it's all gonna differ based on your stamp, your fabric, your paints or inks that you decide to use. So I would always recommend using some test fabric and having enough fabric of the real stuff that you can also do tests on that. I know that this lino print isn't perfect. Some people are able to make the most intricate, beautiful artworks with this medium, but I am new to printmaking and I didn't really want to do an exact copy of the William Morris design from the VNA. I just wanted to get the gist of acanthus leaves. I'm having an acanthus leaf moment, you may have noticed. What I really love about lino printing on fabric is the imperfection that you get in a single layer of the print. The way that you can see the fabric grain show through the stamp, the way that the paint or the ink doesn't fully absorb. I think that this kind of deconstruction that comes out in printmaking creates this almost like patina-like effect. It makes a print look automatically aged and authentic. Back in December of 2022, I actually had the opportunity to go to India for my older sister's wedding. I went with my entire family and my partner and it was while I was in India that I was able to see up close and personal some really beautiful old world architecture and interior design and fabric design and see some of the mistakes that happen when making things entirely by hand in person. The wedding was in Mumbai and afterwards we traveled to Delhi and then over to Agra to see the Taj Mahal. <laughs> 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 Why are on wrong? 
It's not wrong, you just you put the pointy bit at the front. No, I think there's like a long, a long bit. Yeah, oh. exactly. The pointy bit meant to go. We saw the Taj Mahal and its bejeweled exterior. Also, these really adorable tiny chipmunks were there. Don't it disappear? Hello! He's so cute! And we even stopped by a local artisanal workshop to see how the gemstones were carved for the Taj and for other inlaid mother of pearl and gemstone kind of vases, artifacts, etc. that were being sold um, in the region. I found it really inspiring and enthralling to see how the human hand with years of skill and the right tools could carve out one by one perfect jewels to fit a pattern across the Taj. But then every now and then you would spot a mother of pearl flower or a pattern carved into sandstone later on. It just wasn't quite right. Maybe it was a little small, maybe it was a little funky looking. After the Taj Mahal, we went to Fatipur Sikri, which is an abandoned Islamic city in Agra. And every wall and archway and window is carved in the most beautiful, intricate designs. But even here, there were mistakes, some from age and restoration, but you still you would see these perfect, perfect hand carved or painted or otherwise created repeats of intricate patterns. And then at one point or another, the artist would have made a mistake, but the impact of the design was not lost. Even if they don't turn out absolutely perfectly, which is what we're always striving to do, as long as we're doing our best to learn the skills and how to use the tools, I think that that shows through and the mistakes don't take away from the final piece. This is kind of my final piece and you can see that there are a lot of imperfections in it but as I said I really like that. Um, the pattern locks together pretty well but there are also some parts that come out a little far etc. Some of my greens I didn't fully uh, match up but I'm hoping that when on the chair they will give kind of an aged effect and I can also cut out some of the parts that are not so nice. Um, and just use the part that worked out really perfectly. I still need to iron this. So I'm looking at my fabric in the monitor, not at the camera. I, st I still need to iron this to heat seal it. And then I'm going to start looking at it on the chair so I can work out what the prettiest pieces of the fabric are and use those. So in my next video, I'm going to be doing the actual upholstery work, cutting out the really good prints on the fabric and possibly having to make some more because I have eight dining chairs to reupholster. But I think it turned out really cool and I'm really excited to see how it looks on the chairs.